open the Groveland Zoning Board of Appeals meeting um, for June 4th, 2019 at 740. It's actually um, June 5th. June 5th. For June 5th at 740. Um, tonight we have uh, to my left, Chris Goodwin, Kathy Franson. Um, our other two members are absent. Um, however, due to an article that was passed in the town meeting um, this year, we do have the option of continuing the discussion and um, hearing public uh, on the article or the what is the where's the actual number do we have a number for this the should be two now the 192 or are we just using the old one thank you I need she's so efficient right she had it all figured out already um, we do have the option of hearing application 2019-2 and going through the discussion period in the public um, and holding off on the vote. Um, basically, Article 4 of the, the bylaws just passed states that a absent member can miss up to one meeting and review the appropriate materials for that meeting um, and still be eligible to vote on the the application so if it's all right with you we'd like to proceed with the hearing from the public and reviewing um, your changes to the application and then um, we can have them review it after the fact and vote we won't be able to vote until next month but um, at least we'll get through all the, the details of the, the public parts and okay. discussion right. So let's hear application 2019-2 for 929 through 931 Salem Street. Um, requests for a special permit under section 4.5 of the use as restaurant fast food to include drive through windows as defined in section 2 of the Town of Groland zoning bylaws. Um, would you like to come up and we'll get you a microphone too? Sure. Um, 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 bring the chair up or... Feel free to travel with yeah. the microphone if oh, you okay. want to pick it up and if you need to move, sure. move it or bring a chair up yeah, and well, sit here. Or. Good evening and thank you Mr. Chairman, member of the boards. My name is Hal Chubert. I'm a consulting engineer with offices at 112 State Road in Dartmouth, Massachusetts, and I'm here representing uh, uh, ANFRI LLC, or FADI, on this application. Uh, as a public hearing, I think I want to set up in a way where we can, we, everybody in the room can see the plans, because this mm -hmm. way they'll have a better chance to understand my presentation, and then if they have any questions, I can answer the questions. Uh, before I... I uh, go over the, the, the new or revised plan here, I would like to just uh, briefly go over what was pre previously approved by this board. If you recall uh, back in 2017, maybe some of you, I think we're Result. sitting on this board, right? Yeah. right. Uh, Chris, Chris is new, was not. So yes, so Chris, is, that's great. why I wanted to do this right. one. So, Thank you. so back in 2017, we came in front of this board for a, uh, a special permit and a variance uh, to, uh, uh, for 929, uh, 931 Salem Street to demolish an existing residential home that was somewhere in this block here and a, an existing um, body shop building that was along this uh, northeast corner of the property. And part of the application, we asked for a variance to construct an 8,000 square foot building that would be closer than 50 feet from the street line. And we needed a variance for that. And also to construct a canopy for the four pumps of the gasoline filling station that would be also within the 50 foot uh, 
front setback of the street. Uh, both of the existing, the, the buildings that were removed from the site, they were both within this, the 50-foot uh, the setback also. Uh, part of the application was, as I have indicated, is to construct an 8,000 square foot building that will have a 2,750 foot square, uh, square foot convenience store and a 5,250 square foot uh, uh, shop to be used for car repairs and auto body work. Uh, also, part of the application was to construct a four uh, a fueling pad with, with four pumps and a canopy and two above ground uh, fuel storage tanks. Before we came to the board, we went through conservation because this property is within the 100 foot buffer of wetlands. Wetland was delineated. We went, we, wo we worked with the, uh, with conservation. Conservation has hired a, a peer uh, review engineer to go through the calculations and also, I think that process lasted about a year. I, I don't know if you recall, we're going back and forth almost every month. We went through every single detail until conservation absolutely where confident that this is the right layout and this is the right uh, project for this area because the sensit sensitivity of the wetlands and the pro proximity of the wetlands to the, to the project. Uh, I just would like to uh, mention that all the redevelopment, all the activities within this project was to take place within an areas that were previously disturbed. So there was no, no new disturbances to the, to the site. And in fact, it was the opposite. We were able to claim some of the disturbed area closer to the wetlands and, and uh, uh, change that from uh, a gravel to landscape to provide more buffer for the wetlands. So all the stormwater, the design, all the, uh, uh, the drainage, the, the layout, it was all reviewed by the town engineer who's the sub-consultant to the, to the uh, uh, to the Conservation Commission and it was paid by my client. The, you, as you know, this is the procedure. Also after this, we had to go through planning board. Same thing, the, the, the town engineer was involved with the plan, so we had the approval from planning, conservation, and then lastly we came to you and we got your approval for the special permit and the uh, 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 variances that we needed. Since I believe the two buildings on site were removed. The two curb cuts are in place now. We had to get the approval from Mass Highway because uh, Salem Street is Route 97 and that's our state highway. So we got the curb cuts. I believe also we installed the utilities. We ran the, the, uh, the water lines to the, to the site. We needed a domestic line for the water service and also we needed a fire protection line that we ran another eight inch main to the site Sp for the sprinkler, right. Uh, the difference, since then things changed and my client has a different view on running his business and I guess what he wanted to do, he wanted to go back and, and eliminate the, the auto body shop from this equation and reduced the, the, the building and uh, this came up about a few months ago. We, I looked at the plans, I was involved with the original planning and approval of the permits and I said we need to go back and amend all the permits that we have. Uh, so what we did, we first step, we contacted conservation because you know conservation is you know, the, the most you know, right now and because of the location of the property, so we went back to conservation and we explained to conservation that we are making some amendments to the previously approved plans and the amendments are. Uh, now I want to go, I want to keep this plan at, on the bottom of the, the, um, the easel here so you can compare the two. Uh, we reduced the size of the building uh, from 8,000 to uh, 7,500 square feet, I believe. Uh, so you can see this in this box, and this is the originally approved plans. This is the reduced size building, and we increased the size of the convenience store from 
2750 to 3650 to include a coffee shop with the drive through we believe that eliminating the body shop the auto body shop is is a, is it environmentally great improvement to, to the site i mean we all know the site the location of the wetlands so it's the site we know the the how the operation of, of of a body shop is a lot different than a coffee shop so and we also were able to by reducing the, the size of the building we were also able to reduce the pavement coverage within the 100 foot buffer the the wetland buffer so what we did we pushed you, if you're looking at this plan here, there's this red dashed hatch. We were able to move the curbing six feet in the northerly direction of the wetland and add more buffer between the parking lot and the wetland. We did the same thing along the, the west side of the parking. We also reduced this pavement area by replacing the impervious area with green space. What also, we did, we moved the, 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 the tanks away from the 100-foot buffer closer to the street. And that was also another improvement to the plans. And we replaced the tanks with underground double wall tanks. Uh, so those were the changes. And, but we added a drive-through window along the east of the building. For the, for the coffee shop. Conservation looked at this and they agreed that this is an improvement to what was approved before and they did grant us an amendment for their uh, uh, order of conditions to move on, uh, to, 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 to go ahead with, with the amendments. After that, we did file with the, with the planning board, and Rebecca's here also. She was involved with the planning board, she can tell you. Again, they looked at it, and they, you know, the planning board said, this is an improvement to what you previously were granted to do, and we approved the plan. So, again, this is our last step to the zoning board, and we hope we kindly ask for your <coughs> approval for the proposed amendment. The Again, because this was a, a brand new use that wasn't on the, on the previous application, I think it was, there was a discussion with, with the building commissioner and with your uh, administrator, I believe, is that the, the term? Uh, and the town planner <laughs> also is the zoning administrator. Okay, is the zoning administrator the town planner, and by the way, she's doing a super job. Big, big difference for me from two years ago. I was telling her this, and <laughs> you deserve <laughs> good, <laughs> very good job. Thank you. I really think I, she, she I made think our job a lot easier. Yeah, a lot easier. Very helpful, very knowledgeable, very professional. Thank you. And um, so uh, it was agreed that the proper way to proceed is to file for a new special permit. And under your bylaws, a special permit for a drive-through, there's no standalone drive-through definition. I think it's lumped with the restaurants, and that's why it was advertised as a restaurant. There might be some confusion. I know there's some people here in the audience tonight that are questioning whether, what's going on. So it, it's a, it's a drive-through window. Uh, associated with food. You could be serving coffee, bagel, or even, I guess, so people can drive through and order. Uh, food, not a dining restaurant. Not a dining, no, not, not a dining. It's not a dining uh, restaurant. Uh, I do have a floor layout also, which clearly shows that this is not a restaurant. Um, So as you see, uh, this, is, this is the layout. Uh, this is the coffee shop area. Right now, we don't know what's, what layout we're having, so we just indicated 900 square feet for the coffee shop with the drive through. Uh, there's the convenience store in the middle. Uh, 
with the walk-in coolers and and the uh, uh, shelving and the gondolas. The, this is the transaction counter for the gas station, and in between the two, there's a small there's a customer waiting area with seating for uh, my client, who's basically that primarily that's his that's his uh, uh, source of income. He's in the in the uh, car repair business, and this is for his clients. They can sit down and maybe grab a cup of coffee and read the paper or watch some TV while they're waiting for their cars to be serviced. This is the, the garage area. There's no, we eliminated the, 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 the body shop with the painting, with the, with the booth, with the spray booth, so this will not be part of this application. Uh, the elevation, we did revise the elevations of the building, but still the, the building is uh, the same design that was presented to you before. It's a, it's a Cape Cod style building. It's not a metal building that you see in, in industrial zone, in industrial districts. This is more like clapboard with asphalt shingles and dormers that looks more like a New England type. It's very attractive building. Uh, that's all for my presentation tonight and I be glad to answer any questions you may have. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have anything specific right now? I do. Yes, you do. But I wanted you to go first. Do you have any questions? No. Okay. No, I'm all set. No, I'm, I'm all set. Thank you. So <coughs> I just have a question about sure. at the beginning you mentioned that the building <coughs> is going to be reduced to 7,500 square feet. I thought on the plan it said 7,250. 7,250. Whatever's on correct? the plans, yes. Okay. I, I'm trying. Uh, I don't have a sheet I in front so, of me. I thought so, but I just wanted yes. to verify yes. for the record that yes. that is what it says on the plan. Right. The Whatever it was filed, yes. Okay. Uh, and then um, so just a couple of concerns I sort of just want to air out because sure. I have a feeling my other people may have questions about. Yeah. Um, one is the car queue. Yes. So if you have the drive through in the rear. Yes. I could see on the plan that you have about eight or nine cars queued up. I have about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven cars I believe. Right? That's I only showed that because, I mean, we can, we can queue along the parking lot. I still have room for another 11 cars. You're never going to get 20 well, cars no, queued I just, on. I, am, I just didn't want it to spill out into, into the regular the parking lot or where oh, people are trying to come in and get gas. And, yeah, no. You know, once it gets you, a little tricky. Well, you're right because, you know, you, most of your gas operation is in this block here. Right. The northwest block of the property. The... The activities here is associated with the uh, with the repair. So it will be somebody, you know, you drop your car off, the mechanic will take your car, park it there, or bring it to the garage when it's done. He'll take it, and you know. So, you know, even if we even if we extend the queuing to here, you still have another. Um, this is a 20 scale, so I still have another 30 feet and another 60, 70. There. I still have another 100 feet here, which is 20. If you use a 20 foot spacing between cars, you still have another five cars on top of the 10, 11 shown. So really, you're up to 15, 16 cars before you start interfering with any activities on the site. Yeah, my concern was that it would then now block your base, so now you wouldn't be able to come in and out, and you're sort of stuck, and because that's where they would line up is right in front of the base. No, if it I, came on around this that side, corner, if it becomes uh, yeah, if it came know, around the corner, it would block your doors, so you wouldn't be able to get in and out. That's all. I just wanted to sort of yeah. talk about it because I have a feeling other people might be interested in that. And right. then the other question I was hoping you could just address yeah. um, has to do with grease. Grease. So, uh, any grease from the restaurant. So if you have a coffee shop, oh. uh, grease separator, oil separator. Yeah, yeah. So well, absolutely, because, you know, we obviously once this is approved, we have to go through building permits, so we have to go to plumbing. And if this is considered, we'll have to put a grease trap in the parking lot, yes. Right. And yeah. so I saw it on the plan, but I wanted to bring attention yeah. to it because I think that can also be a concern for environmental. That's oh, absolutely. I, I want to make absolutely. sure you addressed it. Yeah, ab absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So, um, these bunch of notes I made about parking.
cards, but I think I figured out my own question. And I think that was it for my big questions. Do you guys have anything else you want to hear from the public? Or? of operation for uh, I, don't know, I don't remember I don't I didn't see anything in the original permit but I don't even think we considered it since it wasn't no I don't believe so but the same would be probably for the coffee shop I don't think you know it'll be in the morning will probably be the same as the yeah. gas station or the convenience yeah. store uh, which whatever they allowed in the district I'm not sure they uh, you know probably like six in the morning until Original coffee shop I'm not sure after seven six seven at night I don't think you do much work so actually I think we I just said because it's actually in your original decision oh is it yeah oh okay. so it says auto body and auto repair work Monday through Friday 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday 8 to 3 gasoline fueling and convenience store Sunday through Saturday 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. Oh, okay so, so that was already done. you're right so the, that was already done okay No, I don't, have, I don't have any questions. I might have to, I want to yeah. reserve my right yeah. to ask more, but. You always have the right to ask more. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> From the public, um, who would want to come forward and make comments or? slow take take your time take right. a deep breath um, and actually this concerns you guys too because I've mentioned your properties in here so if you want to chime in please do um, so my name is Tracy Saragossa um, the letter that we got actually went to Nick Saragossa he's the owner of 10 Hampshire Lane I live there too he can't be here and um, so I'm here kind of representing myself and my family um, where should I start? Um, can I do kind of like a Q and A with you? <laughs> can I do that? Can I ask it like why why yeah. a coffee I don't see shop? Why not. Like, uh, no, I, I'm sorry. I think you have to. All your yeah, questions you will have to be addressed to the board. Okay. Right. So I would do your comments first, and then maybe ask the questions, and then the board can then okay. ask those questions or give them time to rebut. Um. So. Would it, it, it's a restaurant drive through Does that, um, and I mentioned this with Re Rebecca before a little bit, is there any restrictions as to what that could include as far as um, like a Dunkin' Donuts versus like, like, is there, are there restrictions on that? Are there bylaws? It's categorized, the, the literal definition in the bylaws is. I have it right here. You'd like I can read it. A, an establishment whose principal business is the sale of prepared or rapidly prepared food directly to the consumer in a ready to consume state for consumption either within the restaurant building or off premise and usually requires ordering food at a counter or a drive through window. That's basically the extent of the category. So so it doesn't right now it's listed as a coffee McDonald's shop versus a Dunkin Donuts versus just a little drive through window with a guy with a coffee pot. So it's proposed it's proposed as a coffee shop right now, <coughs> but that doesn't prevent it years from now from if it were to be approved as a restaurant drive through today, it could eventually turn into something later on that would be bigger than just a tiny coffee shop or would that be further approvals later on. I don't know if Under that makes any sense. Under the permit, they would be able to does turn it, it does into it kind of a green light further. Fast, a standard fast food restaurant. I don't believe there's you know given that that use is <coughs> if we authorize that unless we put stipulations on like a square the footage or a on site stipulations. Yeah. Because that's my fear is that if we allow something small, like a tiny coffee shop, 
then it would green light bigger things later on that would be a bigger issue. Um, so I think, I don't know. Um, I don't know, that, that's, that's probably a concern of yours. Part. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I can't stay on track. I have trouble with that. Uh, is there anything as restricting the number of certain restaurants and stuff that can be in town? I'm not familiar with, with that. No. No, not that it I'm is aware very of, no. close to all these other ones. We already have the <coughs> yeah. Dunkin' Donuts in Georgetown. There's already a Dunkin' <coughs> Donuts. Yeah. You know, further down, there's obviously... Ultimate Park is right next door. It seems mm. kind of redundant. Um, so I'm just concerned, like, <coughs> why can't it just be like Cumberland Farms does where you have the coffee tiers and everyone comes in and just gets their um, gets their coffee while they're waiting for their car or they come in, they get their lottery tickets, their coffee, whatever it is at a convenience store. It just seems kind of pointless mm. to have a drive through there. Um, so this is just kind of some thoughts that I have. A big concern that I do have is, and I know the conservation was already <coughs> addressed um, with like the body paints and all of that, um, but my concern with a convenience store or, or any sort of fast food is the amount of trash that's produced. Um, and being that close to the wetlands, all that trash is going to blow right in there. So, you know, coffee cups, wrappers, straws, everything is going to end up in those wetlands. So if this were to be approved, and I'm sorry guys, hoping it's not, um, could there be some sort of fencing put up so that we can make sure that the endangered species that are in those wetlands are protected from all that waste? Because, you know, as much as you try, you put barrels out and everything else, <coughs> it's inevitable. The trash ends up on the ground and blows right into those, those wetlands. Uh, that's one of my biggest concerns with this. <coughs> um, something that my father-in-law brought up is the sight lines. They're awful on that road. Coming out of the gas station and Nicole's down the street, awful. There's always accidents there. Um, there's already issues other places along that road. And I know the, the landscape kind of changed when the building came down. Um, and I'm not sure... I've never actually driven into the lot, but I think coming around that corner, the sight lines are an issue, and I don't know if that's been looked into. Um, and then if a big sign goes up, and I don't know the, the dimensions of it, I know it's in the plans for a big gas sign um, with like a concrete structure holding it up and everything, that's going to impede the sight lines even more and could actually um, interfere with Pub 97's sight lines. So that could cause an issue for, for their traffic as well. Um, what else do I have on here? Um, another issue brought up by my husband, actually, with cars going through the drive through is the idling. Um, you know, we're, we're right there. We've, you know, with idling cars, you get all the fumes and everything else. Um, and again, that can be an issue also for the conservation land as well. Um, but if you just have cars sitting there idling, waiting for their coffees every morning, you get 15 cars in that line, um, they're all sitting and waiting. So that was, that was an issue that we um, had in mind. And uh, what was my other one? Oh, this might sound funny, but depending on the fast food that goes in, the smell is terrible. And I am downwind from that. Yours, these, uh, your restaurant, Pub 97, smells great. You don't have any of the fake stuff, that, like oils and stuff like that. It smells great. I love smelling burgers in the summer. But a fast food restaurant is intoxicating. It's, it makes me sick to my stomach. So I'm really concerned if there's something were to go in there, like a Burger King or something like that. Um, Again, it depends on the type of fast food, but um, that was a, another concern of mine. Um, and I think that is all the stuff that I had on my list until you mentioned your hours. And I don't, this probably might not pertain, um, just kind of curious um, because it, it was already approved to get the, the gas station. But the mm -hmm. lighting, 
-hmm. I'm just kind of concerned how bright that's going to be um, at 11 o'clock at night when I'm, you know, trying to sleep. The apartments in Pub 97, they're going to be trying to uh, sleep too. So I'm just curious what the light pollution is going to be from that, even though that part was already approved. I think that's everything I have. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? I don't have a list. I'm just going to speak off the top. My name is Terry Clifford, and I uh, own the property next to a Pub 97, and I also own Ultimate Perk property, where Rich is the uh, tenant there. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't have a lot of concerns with what's going on, except the changes that's going on. Um, and I have questions about it, because I wasn't aware that we're doing underground tanks now instead of above ground tanks. I wasn't aware of that. Um, so that was approved by the engineers to do underground tanks and by the state of Massachusetts? Those, I maybe defer to Rebecca, she was on the planning and conservation. Have you actually seen it prior to this meeting? For this one, I have not seen the one for uh, conservation. Um, and I have seen the one for site plan, but I don't know the jurisdiction of the underground tanks. I believe the state and the fire department put them. Mm -hmm. not That's what I'm talking about, the state of Massachusetts yeah. okay. and the fire marshal. So they would actually approve have they approved that already, Fadi? Or I guess I guess the board has to ask the question. I'm just concerned whether or not that was approved because of the conservation lands right there. I've spent many years um, dealing with gas stations in my lifetime. I worked for a Corporate 7-Eleven where we built gas stations around these properties. It's something that we really need to look at for the small town. I'm not opposed to the above ground. I'm opposed to the underground. Um, so I just want to make sure they are fully passed by the state and the state fire marshal. I think we need to make sure we see those before, because I wasn't aware of that until I heard the gentleman here to state that they went from a, above to below. And the other thing that um, I'm concerned with is also, of course, the uh, fast food restaurant permit. I have that myself. Um, I guess what I'm concerned with, and uh, this this. Uh, this lady mentioned it also, and I'd like to see some stipulations in it. Um, and I'm all for people, entrepreneurs. I'm all for it. I'm not for corporate America. I'm not for it. And I don't think our little town needs a corporate name out there. Corporate name, the corporate name destroys small town businesses anywhere you go. He could put a Subway in there. He could put a Dunkin' Donuts in there. And because of the name, it destroys businesses. Same way with putting a mobile gas station in a Sunoco gas station in, a, a name brand destroys small town, town businesses. I think we need to look at that as a stipulation that if we're going to do this, um, we need to put in there like, like no corporate names, no corporate brands. Um, that, that's, that's something that I'm, I'm very strong on. And the other thing, um, we've changed this to, I heard he started off with no seating, no sit down restaurant. And then he changed it at the, at the end of what he was saying, where they're going to have seating for the people for the bays out back, up in the convenience store. Well, how many, seating, how many seats are going to be there? Are there going to be tables and chairs? Is it just going to be seating? Because if there's tables and chairs, that makes it a sit-down restaurant. So I'm concerned with that also. I, I'm not concerned with, like she said, a, like a Cumberland Farm type drive through or pump coffee, that doesn't, but to compete with a sit-down restaurant, a coffee shop, seat down, like, like a Dunkin' Donuts, a Heavenly Donuts, a, a one of the name brands, you know, I, I, I don't think it's fair to our small community or small business owners. Um, and I can point out, pick out people all over the place. I mean, just look over the bridge. We had a, Jim, a Jimmy's Sub Shop there, I think that was the name of it for 35 years. Two years ago, Subway went right in next to him. Who went out of business? She went out of business. 
because she can't compete with the corporate name. You know, who's struggling right now over there in that little plaza? Haverhill House of Pizza that's been there for over 40 years. I know those guys because the city allowed them to put a, a Burger King right in front of them. Here's a place that I'm sure that they're going to fail now and they're not going to be able to renew your lease. Mark my word for it. They won't be able to do it because of what the corporate name up in front. And I just, that's the only thing I look at for the town. Um, those are my concerns. And I know Foddy spoke to me privately about this, and he told me, that we're not, we're not going to do this, we're not going to do that, we're not going to do this. Unless I think we see some stipulations in there, Foddy's got a big picture in mind, not a small picture in mind. Um, and I understand that. I truly understand it, but that's my feelings on it. And I, just, I wanted to state that. And I don't know if Foddy has any questions for me or not, but uh, I am the butter right next door. So th that's my concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rich, do you have anything? <clears throat> I want to add on something that he did say because in the plans it does show tables and chairs in the plans so I just want to bring that up yeah I believe tables and chairs were included for the convenience store in the original plans as a little <coughs> and there's definitely a seating area for the, the body shop from the original plans so I don't think that's been added necessarily for the convenience or the um, coffee use drive through. Well, can we ask the question what is intended to be the name of the facility? <coughs> um, can we make any stipulations in regards to this type of business from a <coughs> franchise versus non franchise perspective? I don't know if we can even legally do that. Well, one thing I, I, I remember when I, became, when I became when I became when I came in front of this zoning board myself for my business fourteen years ago. We had one person came as an abutter, and their, their, at, their question to the board was, you know, we don't want to have bands. We don't want them to have bands or live music in a pub, bar. Mm -hmm. Stipulation was put in. If you pull that up and you look at my stipulations, that stipulation is put in there. No live music, no bands. Yeah. I, I, we can definitely put stipulations on use. We can't. I don't. I would have to check with town council to see if we can specifically stipulate the branding. business. The branding, branding is what I'm saying. Yeah. Branding. I don't know if branding is within the zoning stipulation legally. Capacity, yeah. Right. I mean, I believe, I suspect planning or somebody like that would be able to do that, but I don't think zoning would be able to stipulate, <coughs> stipulate say, mm -hmm. hey, Ultimate Perk can move to this space, but... Dunkin' Donuts can't, but it, we'd have to check with town council on that one. Yeah, I, I think I'd say we take that as a note. We can check that. And yeah. the yeah. other thing to note too is that the zoning bylaw has changed from 14 mm -hmm. years ago. It has changed, so that's I think really what we need to check on is like what the change did to that. So I, it, it's really just a question that needs to be asked. That I'm not 100 percent sure. Never had that re request before. Let me put it that way. Well, we can put in stipulations to say they only allow, you know, like a counter seating for, you know, a co somebody to stand there and have their coffee. We can't, then no actual tables for sit down meals. Yeah, we, but we I, could I do that. I'm not Something sure we could like do that. the corporate thing. I, I don't know that that's an option, but <clears throat> take a look at it. Because we're actually not going to vote this evening anyway. I understand that. But okay. I, I wanted to throw that out there, but but I do know that being involved in this in some other <coughs> small communities that I've seen stipulations even in our neighboring town this way they allow no corporate in, a, in two of our neighboring yeah. towns right over here I, I just don't know if that's within the jurisdiction of the zoning board yeah. or if that's planning and, yeah yeah, yeah. I'm just not sure yeah. that falls under planning our board so, select, uh, board so, so, so were we right. notified as bu butters about the planning board were we notified about that about the meeting with that or we were only notified about the zoning? We were only notified about the uh, zoning board appeals because the application that was before the site plan, uh, for, before the planning board, was mm -hmm. an application that was done back in 2017. So they just came in to ask whether or not they would need to modify their existing permit. The same with conservation. If it was a brand new application, we would have received notification. Because it was not a brand new application, we did not receive notification. This is a brand new application for a restaurant drive-through. So you would be 
Thank you. Any other public questions, comments? Are we going to get a, a, a table count or anything like that? Well, <coughs> I, I was asking if there was any more comments so yeah. that we could sort of we get all the questions. Right. questions yeah. right, for mm -hmm. everybody. And then any more public <coughs> comments. Right, any more public. And then I was going to give um, the applicant and his representative a chance to maybe address some of the concerns or questions that were addressed. Mm -hmm. So they can sort of take first. So if you would like to sure. address some of the concerns. Sure. Uh, I, I'll start with the site plan, I guess. Uh, I know I, we heard some concerns about the trash and all that. I, I would like to mention that we do have fencing to the south of the parking lot that is on the plan. Uh, so that will take care of probably the trash or uh, the concern that you have. Yeah, it's a straight. No, it's a straight line that goes around here. This is to buffer the the wetlands from from the parking lot. What do you mean trash to to the corner? Well, I mean the trash will be part of the regular maintenance of of the facility. I mean, I I would think people would want to see trash in the parking lot. If I was <laughs> operating a business and there's a trash in the parking lot and clean it up, uh, let me finish. Uh, all the other issues that you mentioned with the site, this is all under the site plan review. This this project was we went through two years of, of permitting. You know, there was a public hearings all the. You were all notified because I know the list. I we did, you know, so many times from conservation, from you know, this was reviewed by the town engineer, by the peer town engineer, both for the site plan and for conservation. Your concerns about environmental, it was all you have. You have the right to have all the concerns. This was all addressed with conservation. Otherwise, they wouldn't issue an order of conditions. You know, I so that. I understand that we, that we got the permit that you got the approval. Right. For the above ground. Right. I wasn't aware of the underground. Above, uh, uh, underground, I have to, I mean, we have no issues if, if this was granted that there will be stipulation and the conditions that the proper permitting from, it, it's DEP and fire department, you know. So we do this, I, I do this for a living. I, for, I've done probably two, three hundred gas stations all throughout New England. This is how we do it, you know. So we don't have an issue. We know that. The, the plans that show the, 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 the type of tanks that are shown here are the double wall fiberglass. The, they wouldn't allow you in the old days to put tanks in the ground because they used to use steel and we know we all know what happens with steel and with the corrosion and when you bury it in the ground. You know? So now it's not allowed anymore. So this will be, have to go through the EP. It's not the jurisdiction of, of the, uh, I believe, the, the zoning board. But again, if we don't we have no objection that there will be a condition that you need to get the mm -hmm. proper approval for the underground storage tanks, you know. So uh, as far as the drive-through with, with the traffic and, uh, you know, with, with the smell, and the, I, I mean, I don't know if this is going to be a different type of food that would be served at the restaurant. I mean, this is a bagel or a coffee shop probably is similar to, uh, to what's served in, in other facilities around the area. Uh, the lighting will be in compliance with zoning. I'm sure they have zoning bylaws. If the, the, the we submitted site uh, plans, when we did the site plan review to show there'll be no spillage of, of light to private into private properties and on the street, that was on the plans. Also, you do have zoning bylaws. If this guy's in violation, the zoning officer can go and say, you know, Mr. Uh, whatever, you're in violation of section blah, 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 you need to take care of it, you know. The sign, it's all in, in compliance with zoning. I mean, we're not, you know, we're not doing, we're not asking for anything that is not allowed. It's, it's the, what's allowed here, the, it's the drive-through isn't allowed by special permit. That's what it is. That's why we're here for this, with the Zoning Board of Appeal. The, the convenience store is already approved. The, the, the body shops are already approved. We do still have approval for the body shop. So if we don't build, if we don't do this, I'm sure my client is going to do the body shop because he needs another source of income. And I, I strongly 
say a, a drive-through is, a, <laughs> is a much better use for this property. But again, this is all approved. Gas station, convenience store. As far as seating, we always show the seating from the old application. We do have seating because seating, we believe it's convenient for, for Fatty to run his business because I think, you know, you have a garage with five, six bays. You get people coming in. It's convenient for people to go grab a cup of coffee, sit down. There's no tables. Uh, the seating's are there. Uh, the convenience store is the convenience store. I mean, I, he might have Kino. I'm not sure. Are you going to have Kino in the convenience store? This is something that it's allowed. You need to have yeah. a, a small table to play your Kino or, you know, so I'm not, you know, you can put stipulation there'll be no sit-down eating, probably, like, or, or dining. What, I'm not sure what the word is with, with, with the... Um, uh, with the bylaws, you know, so it's a 700 square foot coffee shop. You know, we, we heard McDonald's, and you think McDonald's is going to be interested in coming in at, at the 700 square foot shop? I mean, we're, that's not true. you know. That's not what she said. That's not 700 square feet. The convenience store is 2,700 square feet. Yeah, but the, you're only saying you're putting a coffee bar in at 700 square feet. Right. But the use of the building can be stretched at a later time. Do you, uh, you can stipulate that the coffee shop area should not exceed 700 square feet as shown on the plans. That's what I'm telling you because we know what the use is. It's not feasible. If you look at the convenience store, I'm sure you're familiar with convenience stores. If you work for 7-Eleven, if you look at the convenience store, this is not a huge convenience store. I mean, Cumberland Farms, a typical Cumberland Farms is about four or 5,000 square feet. This whole convenience store is about... 3,700 square feet, I said. I'm, I'm not, I don't want to quote. Yeah, it's 36 uh, feet, including, including the coffee shop. Including the coffee, including shop. The coffee and shop and the including the walk-in coolers, including the waiting area, including the, uh, the office, including the counter. So really, it's not, it's not a huge convenience store, you know. Um, but again, if this is a concern, yes, you have, you know, if we submitted plans for a 700 square foot coffee shop, I think you can say, well, your approval is seven for 700 square foot coffee shop. Now, as, my, as far as branding, I'm not really sure. You know, check with your town council. If this is the case, yes. But if it's not, I don't think you can do that because I do this every single day. And I, I tell you, I chair the zoning board in my town. <laughs> so I know, for, I can't tell people you can't have this, you can't have that, unless your, your bylaws Strictly says no French, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if, if this is in your bylaws. So we're not really asking for anything that is not allowed. <coughs> we're, really, we're, we're here for the special permit process. And this is our presentation. There's nothing, I mean, you have any other issues, you can talk to Fadi, he, see what he has in mind. I mean, I can always answer to technical more and what's shown on the plans. I'm not... I can't run, I don't know how he's going to run his business, what kind of coffee he's going to sell. Uh, you know, what, this is something that you can talk to him about that. But My only concerns are is to do what, we, what he says he's going to do, which is, is this going to be a mom and pop coffee shop? I got no concerns with that. What if it's going to expand into uh, a convenience store, oh, the convenience store is failing, and we're just going to add 15 more tables. I, I, I think this is, I mean, and again, Rebecca, you might want to check into, and I mean, would the, also you, you guys, you know, check the zoning bylaws and see, because we are here for the 700 square feet. We're not really asking for more than 700 square feet coffee shop. So if you want to be specific and saying this is, this is approved for 700 foot coffee shop, any changes you have to come back to the, any amendment or any changes you have to come back to the board. And this way, you'll have the opportunity, if there's any change, that, you just, know... Just for the record, the plans state 900 square feet. 900 square oh, feet. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Show. Whatever's right, so shown on the plans, I don't say, you know, I apologize. Well, I, everyone's just sort of throwing around like, 700. <laughs> we want to make sure yes. it's accurate. It's 900. No, whatever's shown, shown on, on the plans, plans, 900 square feet. Yes. Whatever's filed. I, I apologize. I have... Literally, I have like 30 projects. No, it's fine. <laughs> I just I want to make sure to that everybody track, in the room understands um, that it's actually 900, 900 not 700. Feet. Right. That's all. Just clearing up the record. Right. And, you know, we, we have no objection to that, Fetty, right? 900 square foot coffee shop. Yeah. 
It's not a restaurant. My understanding, it's not, you know. So any changes, we'll, we'll have to come back to the, to the zoning board where we'll be advertised, you'll be notified, you'll be, you know, I think. So there's nothing in the zoning bylaw or the general bylaw that prohibits franchises in the town of Groveland. So unless there's another regulation out there, there's nothing that prohibits franchises as in the bylaw being the zoning and the general. Uh, some of the other concerns that were raised, maybe I just want to sure. bring them to your yeah. in case you want to address them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one was the sight lines yeah. at the property, and also, the, I believe the question was about the gas sign and how, where that would be located and how that would. Yeah, do you want to address that? Uh, I, this, I don't. I think Rebecca. My, I think I, think I submitted the full plans. I apologize. I don't have the the entire set, but. The, I have the full set right here. If you'd like to right. use it as uh, a yeah, but I would like to say that the zoning will have to be the the size and the location of the sign has to be in compliance with zoning bylaws. So if it's not, the building inspector will not issue a building permit for the site. So if we're going with something that's bigger, what's allowed, we need to get a variance. It means we have to come back to this board. It means they have to advertise. It means you get notified by mail. So. Whatever we show on the plans, and I, I apologize, this is going back three years. Whatever shown on the plans, it was what was reviewed by the town engineer and what was approved. And so I'm I assuming. know that. I, she just was asking the question, yeah. so I thought you might oh, like no, to no, address I'm, where it's located so yeah, she, you can address it, the concern. It is located at, along, yeah, it's 10 feet from the property line, and I believe it's in compliance with zoning. And also the size would be shown. Um, I'm just saying that if it's not... You, we, we won't get a building permit for it, you know, unless we uh, get a variance from, from this board. Yeah. Um, it's on sheet eight. Sheet eight. Okay. Yeah, it's 10 feet from the property line, and the size is 24 square feet. So you can come up and take it, a look at it if you'd like. It's a 24 square feet. Oh, you yeah. do? Okay. The, the, right. Cur curb cuts already approved because this is, I mentioned, because of the state. They're already in place. They are already constructed. The sign is not on because there's no construction yet. But yeah, with the sign on, yeah. The sign has to be 10 feet away from the property line, I believe, according to zoning bylaws. And that's what this, this sign is shown. Okay. And the size of the sign is 24 square feet. So. We're really not talking about a huge pylon sign, I mean, 24 square feet. It's enough to have a small logo and the, uh, and the prices for the regular and the super. <laughs> so. And the, and the support for the, the concrete? Yeah, it's, yeah, really it's, it's concrete footing with, with the planter just to make it look attractive. So. Right. No, I, 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 uh, I understand. I, it just so it's, it's ten feet from the property line. But if you put the scale on, this is twenty scale. It's about twenty feet from the edge of pavement. So when you're when you're out in this driveway and you're looking this way, the sign is about ten feet behind your 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 sight. Is that where, where you just pointed? Going to the left side of that driveway? Yes, that's where the sign is going. That's why we show the sign on the plan. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to make sure to go yeah. through the list of concerns. Just Absolutely. Just to make sure we address everything. If, you, if you'd like to, you don't have oh, to. Oh, no, no. I, I would gladly do. I mean, you know, it's not, like I said, we really spent two years of planning with, Planning board and no, I, I know that's why I'm saying you know you must have been notified in the previous applications unless you moved or you're you know yeah okay. 
Ah, okay. All right. Yeah. The only other concern that was raised was the smell from the restaurant. So if you want to address it, you don't need to. I, it's up to you. I'm not sure. I think, you know, the smell is, it'll be, uh, I'm sure the restaurant will be constructed if there's a hood or cooking, will whatever building codes or plumbing codes, it has to be constructed to that. What kind of food or spices he uses, I don't know. I have no control. I, I'm not sure, you know. It, it's a coffee shop. I'm not really sure what they, you know, bagels and maybe eggs or something, you know. Coffee shop would be no Yeah, there would be no issue for Right. Well, most you know, likely it probably won't be cooking, you know, so I, I don't, <laughs> you know. <laughs> It'll be prepackaged food, most likely, you know. I'm going to be there for the next 25 years, <laughs> and that's the guy who wants to do a food business. I want you to coffee, bagel, and samosa. I want to do it. Not a good food business. Yeah, they go around. Because they I don't want to be there 20 spiders. hours a day. Yeah. I'm already long time, long there, long time. I want to do all these numbers in said I have a coffee, I do have a free coffee and free uh, a free juice for kids and a soda, it's not a lot but that's what I have today, so people come in for all changes, they wait they get a sticker, they wait I'm good at serving people on time and they're out in 10-15 minutes nobody sit there for a long time I kick them off <coughs> we'll just use it in case somebody else has a comment any other comments, questions? Anything else you'd like to say? Before uh, we close the public hearing? Okay, I, you're closing the public hearing tonight? Um, I, that is, okay. that's the sure. plan. Okay. Yes. I just have yeah. one statement. Of course. Sure. Bernadine Clifford, um, Pub 97, been in town since I was in my 20s. Um, we had really no concern when Fadi first started, but then when the plans changed, you know, we wanted to know what was going on, and that drive-through does really just abuts our property really close. So I don't know how that's all going to work out. We're going to have to come up with a plan on how that you know, retaining wall or whatever gets t taken care of. Um, the traffic will always be an issue. It's hard for me to get out of there every night when I leave or every afternoon when I leave the pub. So it's. You know, I don't know if we can do it. We'll ever be able to do anything about that. It does. You know, it doesn't matter where he puts his drive, the drive-through. It's going to be an issue, especially at that crazy, you know, four o'clock time when everybody's commuting. There's nothing you can do about it. It's just who we are. So until the, we just wanted to see the changes and you know to be heard. And you know, thanks for hearing us. Well, thank you. Thank you. you have every right to. Uh, this is, you know, and I, I'm here to address your comments to your satisfaction, and, you know, but I, I would do the same if I was in the butter and I have a concern. I would go and ask the question, and if you heard the answers, if you're not convinced, I'm not sure what I can do to convince you. But really, this is, this, like I mentioned, we went through the the site plan review and the zoning and conservation for. In, it was reviewed by every department and state, and so it's already there. It's already approved. The the the, the, the convenience store with with the gas station, with the body shop. So we think the drive-through is a much better use, especially it has less impact on the environment because of the specifics of the site, because of the site and the location of the wetlands and all that. You know, traffic. It came up before, too. It was discussed. Let me tell you, though, gas, gas stations are not traffic destinations. What it means, I don't drive. No, I mean, I tell you that. I, I know. I'm, I'm not driving around. I'm not driving from w uh, cities around here to, to get gas. It's mostly people that drive and buy. They live in the area. They work in the area. They drive and buy. They grab a cup of coffee. They grab a gallon of milk or whatever they sell in the store. Then. So, really, uh, it's uh, you know it's another business next year business, and you know hopefully you guys can be good neighbors, right? <laughs> yeah, I know.
And your concerns, I don't think we have any issues, Fatty, to restrict the size because 900 square feet <laughs> is shown on the plans. Any deviation from the plans, you have to come back to the zoning board, you know, so this way you have your chance because they can't, you know, they need to advertise, you'll be notified, you come back, you know, so this way, you know, we have no objections. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll close the public hearing. Vote to close the public hearing. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And what we're going to do is phase we'll, we'll discuss a little bit now. Have, mm. If we have any other questions, we'll come back to you. But then um, we'll get in contact with our other members. Sure. Um, <clears throat> and if they have any other questions um, next week, they'll be able to address you. But we just won't include general public discussion. Anything you guys want to? No, I, I think do now I think or that or pretty much. Off till? Um, I think I'm I'm good. I I really looked through the plans pretty heavily and studied everything. And I was here for the free will already. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, you know, just studied <coughs> the changes mm -hmm. and. Um, but I I think I'm good as far as questions go. I can, unless you know our other member brings up something that might yep. trigger something else, but. Um, right now uh, I'm good for questions yeah I mean as far as the plans go I'm pretty good as well um, the only question that, that I had I think I actually just more is just checking while we have the chance in the next month is that was on the the, the branding the corporate you yeah. know, entity uh, that, that came up you know, I think that's at least worth looking into to see you know yeah that we, we can, can you know, contact the town council and yeah, get up just, just to see recommendation I, I think, I think that's worthwhile or not that's even something we can consider right I, I think we definitely have a few stipulations we can add in. Yeah, I, I think I agree. For yeah. seating and for, and for, and for size and, t and tables. And things like <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, then I think of the three of us that are here, come to your next the next meeting with whatever you would want to put in for a stipulation mm -hmm. so that we're prepared yeah. to put all that together all at once if that's yes. the route we're going to go. Mm -hmm. So just make sure you bring all those notes to that meeting and then we can go through everything one by one. Yeah. Did you have any other questions, Jay? No, I think that's that's it. I don't. I mean, overall, I don't think any of the changes from a environmental perspective or any of that impact us. So I think that's up to the stipulation that all the other permits and approvals are in place. Yeah, the, and, and likewise with the likewise with the tank issue and yeah. things like that. So yeah. yeah. So you're officially continued until the next meeting. Thank you. And then hopefully we'll have everyone here. We can do a vote, and we'll put you on first, if, if that's okay. Rebecca? Yes, I would just suggest for the record that you were to ask for the vote. Oh, yes. thank you. She's so good. It makes us follow the rules. Um, I'd like to make a motion to continue the application 2019-02 to the July what day is it in July? Somebody help me. Yeah, I can tell you one second. July 3rd. The July 3rd meeting. Um, yeah. yeah, to avoid vacation week. Yeah. yeah no, uh, the week with the 4th of July, people would be taking yeah, that week. Generally, we yeah. push it to the middle of July because otherwise you're contending with the 4th. Right. Would you guys be interested in doing something on the third week of June? That would be two weeks from tonight. Um, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, two weeks from tonight, which would be the, the 19th. 19th. I may potentially be in Amsterdam. I, I, well, yeah, well, then, this is that. <laughs> Probably. All right, so. We also got to check with, I, I don't know if we want to schedule anything until we check with John and yeah, like yeah, see true. what Should the options are. Okay. Um, I see we keep yeah. it the third for tonight and then hopefully. 
I mean, it's fine with yeah. me. I'm not going away. I don't know if what you guys have planned, but I'll be around. I, I, I don't think I have any plans to go away, but no. Well, any fireworks. It's the fireworks. The evil fireworks that night. Oh, so. yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think we need to move it, but... Not sure when, just yet. I We need to check with John right. to see what his schedule is so that we can have... There's no point in me convening it or have, voting on this right. or, or having us come up with it. We don't have four people, so... Yeah, exactly. Right. So, yeah, so, so either the 10th or the 17th, whichever better. Or right. So we will get back to you on the, an actual date because the next meeting falls on the 3rd of yeah. July. I yeah. have a feeling that most people are probably not around. Yeah. So you, you probably you don't want have to push it to the Don't want to drive down from Dartmouth down the fourth of July. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll let you know as soon as we know. Time wise, how what is our notice time for a meeting? Is it two weeks or so we have, um, for the for the agenda I only need forty eight hours. We already noticed Right, so it's just a continuance, yeah. Okay. Well, maybe we can work on that tomorrow and yeah, just get an email out and see when people can come, email. talk to John, um, and see what his availability is, how long it will take him to take a look at the video, go over the materials. He may have actually reviewed the <coughs> materials already. That would be my guess because he's pretty good like that, studies ahead of time. But he'll want to watch the video, I'm sure. So. And generally, I believe for room reservation and all that, it's either the it's usually the third Wednesday is the other alternate thing. Yeah. Yeah. The first <coughs> one. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
thorough yeah. as usual. Indeed. Thank you, Rebecca. Has everyone gone through them? What? Have you gone through them? Yeah. All right. I'd like to make a motion to uh, approve the May 1st, 2019 minutes. Second. Second. Well, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, quick, just the next is open discussion, so I just have a quick question. Did we have any invoices for uh, Eagle Tribune or anything? No. Okay, nothing's come in yet for, Nothing this, has come in. for this application. Um, so that was the new policy that we had. So the new policy was that that right, would they, be right, they do it, right? right. Applicant. See? So the applicant provided Already the uh, legal notice, um, and they also provided the mailing and provided us with the green cards. And um, you received all the green cards for this yep, one? Yep, so we should be all Nice. Done. So efficient. I love it. That's Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I, out of curiosity, have we heard anything back from Mr. Yang to see what happened? No. Okay. Just, yeah. No. Nothing. Uh, anything else for open discussion? What else from the chat? Or would you rather go home? Mm, or? We, yeah. Yeah. Anything else going on? And uh, is there anything else on the on the, on the 40B? Or? Uh, that's a question. Rebecca said there might be something. That was last week, so I don't know if you've heard anything. So there might be something brewing. Mass Housing hasn't returned uh, any of the inquiry in terms of the project eligibility. However, there's been a couple of calls in regards to obtaining a butters list and the Zoning Board of Appeals application, um, a traffic study, but nothing um, has been confirmed. Okay. Right. So we know as much as we did last time. All right. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting at 8.53. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Charlie. So Thank you, Charlie.